I've said it before and I'll say it again. If there's anything humans love to do, it's organizing things. We have a natural need to put things into categories, and videos I've done in the past have certainly shown that to be the case. But let's take a step back further and look at the bigger picture still. In order for us to organize, we need systems, and a lot of those systems revolve around math. Now, if you haven't vomited all over your computer screen at the mere mention of mathematics, then you're probably like I am and think that numbers are really interesting. Of course, not everybody counts the same way, and a lot of the earliest cultures use methods that make even counting to ten a completely different experience. So today, we're going to look to the past and present to appreciate some awesome counting systems. This is List. Number 7. Mayan. Like in the awesome writing systems video, which shares a number of similarities with this one, Mayan is on our list. Now, the Western world enjoys the number 10 quite a bit, and as such, our counting system is in base 10, meaning we have 10 numerals that repeat every time we run out of them. Mayan, on the other hand, used a base 20 system that only relied on two symbols, dots and bars. Each dot equals 1, and each bar equals 5, so in order to count in Mayan, you would organize dots and bars from 1 all the way up to 19, and when you hit 20, you'd use another dot above the first set of dots and bars. This dot is kind of like our 10 in base 10. So in essence, if you wanted to show the number 54, you would have two dots representing two sets of 20, hovering over two bars and four dots representing 14. And 14 plus 40 equals 54. And so it goes with powers of 10, or in this case 20, where you start a new set of numbers after passing 400, 8000, and so on. Number 6, Babylonian. One of the oldest civilizations in history, the Babylonians borrowed the cuneiform style of writing from the Sumerians, where their letters have a distinct wedge shape around 2000 BC. More complex still than Mayan numerals, Babylonians' numerals are base 60, way higher than any other culture. So how do you fit 60 numerals into a counting system? Simply make one mark for one, then another for two, then go on until you reach 10, where nine marks become a left-facing arrow. Then repeat this pattern until you hit 59, in which the number 60 becomes a single mark, in the same way Mayan works. This all seems rudimentary, but Babylonian numerals were the first system to be positional, meaning this was the first system to have an ordered set of numbers, a ones place, a tens place, etc. Number 5. Egyptian. Hieroglyphs look pretty cool, but have you ever wondered how the Egyptians counted all those goods they traded? Well, they had a systematic way of organizing numbers, but those numbers are more like a complicated version of tally marks. Each order of magnitude in Egyptian is represented by a symbol. Dashes for ones, heel bones for tens, coils of rope for a hundreds, water lilies for a thousands, bent fingers for ten thousands, tadpoles or sometimes a frog for a hundred thousands, and finally, a man with his arms raised for a million, or more fun, an uncountable amount of things. Number 4. Hexadecimal. There are a number of different languages for programming, but at their core are number systems that make them up. The simplest and most well-known is binary, but hexadecimal is another extremely useful one at base 16. While binary, only either a 1 or a 0, represents one character, bytes can contain two sets of hexadecimals in packets called nibbles. To make this representation easier, the numerals are 1 through 9, then the letters A through F. This wasn't the first notation, however. Early propositions include macrons over the digits 0 through 4 after the first 9, using the letters U through Z, or most interestingly, a completely new set of characters made up of bars and hashes. Hexadecimal is also useful for coding web colors because using nibbles makes representing colors easier. If each color red, green, and blue makes up two digits worth of shades 0 through F, we get a resulting 16,777,216 possible colors. Number 3. Oxopman. On the island of Papua New Guinea, there is a tribe of people called the Oxopmen who developed a base 27 number system. That sounds oddly specific, but it actually is a physical representation of numbers. In order to determine a number, you point at a specific part of your body which is laid out in order as all five fingers on one hand, then the wrist, forearm, elbow, arm, shoulder, one side of the neck, ear, eye, and nose, and then the same way back down the other way. If you were to count all the way from 1 to 27 and, or wanted to talk about all of one thing, you thrust your fists in the air and say, FOO! Number 2. Duodecimal. Believe it or not, even though the base 10 number system the West uses all the time to do any kind of math from arithmetic to theoretical physics is the standard, there are some who say it's just not good enough. The Dozenal Society of America in the UK think that base 10 is not nearly as effective as base 12. They propose a total regime change because mathematically, 12 is just a better number. It's more divisible than 10 and makes fractions easier, shows up more often in traditional jobs like bakers and grocers, 
And there are plenty of natural things based on 12, like the number of finger bones in the human hand or lunar cycles out of the year. The Dozenal Society has multiple ways to write the two missing numerals to create the 12 duodecimal digits, but the most widely accepted are Dec, which looks like an X, and L, which looks like an upside down 3. Number 1. Quipu. Probably the most unique and interesting of any counting system, Quipu is a method used by the Incan people of modern day Peru. Quipus look like elaborate necklaces made out of cloth, but they're actually intricate ways of communication. Depending on the string's length, knot, and color, each string on a quipu has the potential to keep dates, accounts, statistics, and even tell basic stories and poetry. But for our purposes, they count numbers. Each cluster of knots represents a digit, but the knot used determines its type. An overhand knot with three turns in it represents the number three, and a figure eight knot represents a power of ten. These quipus could get so complicated that villages would get certain people to memorize the rules of these strings so that they could communicate properly. Well, it's time for the list honorable mention. Not quite fitting into the list, but it's still worthy of some note is the 1960s phenomenon New Math. New Math was a brief, dramatic change in mathematic education that was a direct result of the space race and America and Russia's rivalry. The thinking was that if the US could educate its youth in more abstract ways, we could for sure beat the Russians' engineers and continue our apparent streak of being masters of the world. So, children in primary schools were taught all sorts of things such as modular arithmetic, algebraic inequalities, matrices, symbolic logic, Boolean algebra, abstract algebra, and finally, learning counting systems in bases other than 10, which, not surprisingly, confused the crap out of pretty much every 60s school kid. Thanks for watching this episode of List! If you have any questions you'd like me to answer, or have an original song you'd like me to put in the background of a future video, leave it in the comments or email me at stuffyouprobablywondered at gmail.com. Also in the comments, share with everyone. Would you want to see the world adopt a new number system other than base 10? Have you come up with a counting system yourself that you want to share? Either way, I'll see you next time on List.